there's this idea that gets going around um, that I want to look at. And the idea is this, that you have to learn to love yourself. And some people even say that you have to love other, uh, love, you have to learn to love yourself so that you can love others. And to bring, to teach this, they quote that verse that says, love your neighbor as yourself. Therefore, you need to love yourself. But the truth is that we automatically already love ourselves. And right there, you're going to stop and say, oh, I, I hate myself. Well, let, let me, let me clarify a few things that I, I feel like we're starting off wrong. Love is more about an action. Love is more about an action. Now, now some of you right there are thinking, what? Because we base so much of what we call love to be a feeling. You know, if I love a girl, that means my, my heart, you know, I feel something for her. Well, what happens when you get married and you don't feel those feelings anymore? Does that mean you fell out of love? Is love something willy-nilly? Can God fall out of love? You know, you, you start having all these questions that are, that are really kind of concerning and confusing. And here's the thing. We naturally love ourselves. To love, it, love is an action. So if we naturally love ourselves, what I'm saying is we naturally watch out for ourselves. We naturally serve ourselves. It is hard to lay ourselves down for the sake of others. Now, with that being said, so yes, love is an action. But I will say this. We don't need to learn to love ourselves. We need to learn how to accept ourselves. And you might be thinking, well, what's the difference? Now, well, let me get to that. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 4 and no, four and 5 says this. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude right here. It does not insist on its own way. Now, if we need to learn how to love ourselves, well, wouldn't that mean – you see I'm saying? There's a little bit of a contradiction here. That's because we think that love means feelings. If I love myself, that means I accept myself. But the two are not not mutually exclusive. You can not accept yourself and still love yourself. Loving yourself is this, putting yourself first, doing things for you without considering someone else. Accepting yourself is this, being okay with acknowledging the fact of your looks, who you are, realizing that you need to change and, and some areas of your life need to be better. What some people do is, is they do this. In order to accept myself, I need to not change. And you just have to accept me for who I am. That is a very immature way of looking at things. As you grow, you're going to find that there's some things about you that are immature. Some things about the way that you act or the way that you think or the way that you talk. Hopefully, you are continually growing and, and maturing and becoming better in those areas. You don't want to be the same person for your whole life. I mean, think about if, if we said as a, as a four-year-old, if you don't like me, that's your problem. And we stayed the same that was when we were four years old. That's just not good. So now let's look at a few, a few other things. John 15, 13 says that the greatest love, there can be no greater love than this, that you lay down your life for someone else. So once again, the idea of love being other-focused, not self-focused. See the, see the difference there? Now let's, let's, let's go a little bit further down the rabbit hole. I think that part of accepting yourself is... Um, Taking care of yourself. Now, this can oftentimes get out of hand, too. What I mean by taking care of yourself is eat healthy, exercise, take time off, uh, those things. Okay, that's fine. But when, when you get to taking care of yourself of taking care of yourself first or to the harm of others, now we've got a little bit of a problem. Let's look at Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 through 4. Do nothing, nothing from selfish ambition or conceit. But I need to learn to love myself. I'm just loving myself. No, you're being selfish and conceited. Your ego is out of control and you're very prideful about yourself. Now let's look at this again. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility, count yourselves, I'm sorry, count others as more significant than yourselves. As more significant than yourselves. Do you need to take care of yourself? Do you need to eat and sleep and exercise? Yes. Oh, yes, absolutely. But that doesn't mean you need to be on some quest to love yourself. You're naturally going to love yourself, even if you don't accept yourself. You're going to orient your life to yourself. It, you don't have to be trained in, in, in being selfish. That's not something that, that you're going to love yourself no matter what you do. But you're not going to accept yourself no matter what you do. There's a lot of people who don't accept themselves. There's a really big difference there, too. So let's, let, let, let's continue on. 
So accepting yourself, how do you do that? Well, by accepting what God says about you rather than what you say about you. For instance, God says that we are made in the image of God. That means whether people find me physically unattractive or physically attractive, I'm still made in the image of God. That means that my happiness will never come from a relationship. Do you hear what you just said? If people find you attractive or nobody finds you attractive, your happiness will not come from a relationship. I am married now. There was a time when I was insecure about myself. I had to come to grips with that. And in marriage, my wife hasn't satisfied that area. I have had to become secure in myself by what God says. Now, what I mean by secure in myself, I'm not saying trusting myself. I'm saying accepting myself. Am I the most attractive guy out there? No, and that's okay. Are there guys more attractive than me? Yes, and that's okay. Um, are there things about me that I need to change? Yes. Am I physically, am I, am I the height of, of, no. We are all passing away. So let's just kind of accept, accept that from, from the start. You know, mentally, our brains are deteriorating slowly. Our bodies are deteriorating. My hair is going the way of the buffalo. I've got a bald spot back here. I've got gray hairs. You're not going to live forever. So I hate to burst that bubble. But being on some self-serving quest to, you know, love yourself is a completely useless endeavor. Rather than saying, I need to learn to love myself, we need to say this, I need to accept myself for who God says. God says that we are his children. If when we accept him, we are adopted in as heirs, we are his children, that God delights in us, that, you know, God has plans for us, that there's more than just this physical life. It says that there's going to be a resurrection. And then you know what? Our, our earthly attractive appearance is going to amount to nothing. See, we as, we as people, some of us are, are early bloomers, and we become really attractive in 16 or 17 years old. Some of us, most of us know, but some of us are early bloomers. And then you get to be about 25, and that's the short window of your attraction, of your attractiveness. After about 25, you just start getting uglier and uglier every day. You get, you get wrinkles and all kinds of stuff. Our physical attraction is a very short-lived process. We don't need to learn to love ourselves. We need to learn to accept ourselves. We are in failing bodies. But the bodies that we live in now are not eternal. And God has something better for us. And God does a work in us. And, okay, so I'm a failure. He who began a good work will see it through to completion. Trust in God, not in your own goodness. Oh, well, I'm just, uh, you know, I, I'm doing pretty good. Okay, well, the Bible says that there's no one who's not a sinner, so let's just kind of keep things in perspective here. If there's someone who says that he's perfect, he's a liar. <laughs> you see what I mean? The Bible ha it gives us this great balance of being humble before God, but yet still being secure in who we are before God. And the thing is, is if you're looking to learn to accept yourself based on your physical appearance, it's never going to happen. If you're fat, you should lose weight for the sake of your physical health, not to make other people happy. You're not going to be any happier as a skinny person. Well, that's not entirely true. Um, when you overeat, it does mess with your emotions. So there is that. But I mean, if you haven't learned to accept yourself, then losing weight's not going to win the battle. You need to learn to accept yourself. So that being said, do you have to love yourself before you can love others? No, absolutely not. Love is an action. You need to lay your life down for others because it's it's gonna it's gonna your world is gonna revolve around you naturally, and. Do I have to learn my learn to love myself? No. You have to learn to accept yourself. There's a big difference. So I hope that this was helpful.